This episode is sponsored by Manscaped. I was hoping for a free-flowing, attractive game of rugby full of high-quality play and electric tries. Well, we didn't get that, but what we did get was much, much better. Hello, amateurs. Welcome back to the channel. If you like what I do here, there's a subscribe button down there. Give it a whack for me. Now then, what do you want in a final? You want drama, you want jeopardy, you want fierce competition and you want it to go all the way to the final whistle. And we got all of that and plenty of it. This was an epic final and it started with Saints uh, giving a theme of how they played a lot of this game where they messed up a starter play. This is in the very first minute. Will Muir kicked through, Gallagher was sprinting onto the ball, looked like he was sure to score, but knocked on just before the line, he couldn't gather it. Furbank probably would have got back and made the tackle anyway. But this led to another theme in this game, which was the scrum. The scrum played a huge part, especially early doors. Northampton looked solid at first, but then Abana really started to put the squeeze on Trevor Davison, who didn't look his rock-solid self. Uh, eventually, Bath got another penalty, Quite a few penalties early in this game to Bath, which Russell absolutely shanked. Um, but he got another one shortly afterwards for 3-0 to Bath and they were dominating early territory. Shortly after that, Charlie Yules absolutely whacked George Furbank. A real tough, hard legal tackle, even though it was you know marginally late, but it was absolutely fine. And again, this was a trend that happened throughout the game. Bath's tackling was ferocious some huge shots going in I don't remember them being that aggressive in the tackle for a very long time Northampton another scrum and Mitchell got put under pressure by Spencer Ben Spencer did this brilliantly throughout especially in the first half where he kind of showed a bit of disinterest he kind of dummied that he was going to run away and then come back and then put a ton of pressure on Mitchell. He did it repeatedly in the first half, and it really slowed Northampton down. Following on with that tackling trend, from that scrum, Underhill absolutely smashed Alex Mitchell as he stepped back inside. It was one of those tackles. Mitchell did not see it coming. He certainly didn't have enough time to get out of the way of it. And classic Sam Underhill, probably the best tackler in the game, absolutely whacked him. Underhill would go on to have an outstanding game in lots of ways, which I'll discuss as this video goes on. Another great battle that was happening at this part of the game because it was kind of scrappy. This opening 20 minutes, there were, there were errors. Both teams looked a little bit clunky. Competition at scrum and breakdown was fierce. But Freeman, Tommy Freeman versus Will Muir in the air was building up to be another great battle. Freeman just edging it with some terrific takes when he wasn't in the best position either. Finn Smith then missed a penalty. Uh, another very kickable one, similar to Russell in early days. Nerves absolutely showing through. Northampton did get through some phases. They really did, uh, but they looked clunky. They didn't really go anywhere. Bath's tackling was supreme. They looked good. So Finn Smith recognised this and real maturity, as he's shown so many times, knocked over a 40-metre drop goal to make it 3-3. And that was just perfect timing. But you could see the Bath players congratulating, congratulating each other after a really good defensive set. Straight from that kickoff comes the big, big talking point of this game. And it's unavoidable. Uh, it has to be talked about. Juan Augustus carried the ball up from a Tommy Freeman pass and Obano absolutely levels him. It looked bad on first looking. You couldn't quite tell where the contact point was, but there were a few things that made me think this was going to be trouble. One, Obano got up looking very, very sheepish. Augustus also knew he'd been hitting the head. He looked at the referee as if to sort of appeal and it was absolutely a red card. I've got to say huge credit here to Christoph Ridley who was given an opportunity by the TMO to downgrade it but he was absolutely steadfast in what he'd seen and I think he was correct. He used the word something like it's just a normal brace into a tackle by Augustus. It's not a sudden drop. It's not a significant drop. Abano was always hitting upwards and aggressively. It was a stone cold red for me. And the biggest sad point for this, for me, uh, at that time of the game, was that it robbed us of a really big contest in the Obano versus Trevor Davison scrum contest, which was building into a real great one. I feel sorry for Obano. He's not a dirty player. He was trying to put a big aggressive hit on and got it wrong. He got it wrong. But also really sorry for Alfie Barbary who had to leave the field so that Bath could bring on another loose head for the scrum. 
Now, the big thing that people say about this is red cards ruin games, and it categorically is not the case generally, and it definitely did not ruin this game because, if anything, it, it sparked this game into a bit more flow. Sometimes teams can get nervous when they've got the extra player, but that wasn't the case for Saints, not immediately anyway, because they got their game mo moving. They did the classic Joe play, Leinster, Ireland, uh, go one way, come back, dummy, and then back inside, and Furbank got put directly between the two props to side through and pass to Tommy Freeman for the try, which made it 10-3. And for them to score so quickly after... The red card, it just felt, wow, that's huge momentum. It just made it feel like it might be a real major turning point. But Bath actually came back into it very quickly. Will Muir, again, uh, talking about these aerial battles, he, he retrieved a kick. And then Spencer, who was brilliant all day, his attacking kicking was supreme, put a crossfield kick in, which Matt Gallagher, the ball just didn't bounce up for him. Gallagher was going to be in, but it had two low bounces and it just it just dribbled into touch. In reflection, Spencer could have actually kicked the ball much straighter into the in-goal area, but he probably just wasn't aware of that. Just unlucky, the bounce didn't bounce up, otherwise Gallagher would definitely have been in. However, Saints get the ball back and Tom Pearson, who carried really heavily all day, particularly through the middle, went over red path for the second time. The ball was moved wide, Ollie Slytom tearing down the wing and he then proceeded to make the flukiest kick I've ever seen in any game of rugby. He was looking inside, looking inside. He saw Mitchell there, who was clearing under the sticks, tried to knock it off his instep, back in towards the post, and the ball eventually actually came off his toe, went into right into the corner of the in-goal area, <laughs> foxed everybody apart from himself, and he dived on it for 15-3. And again, I was really worried for Bath at that point. It just seemed like they've had... The sending off, which was unfortunate but correct. And then uh, a, a really good try by Saints, followed up by this one, which, although there was a lot of good play involved in it, the finish was was very, very fluky. However, and I'm going to come back to him several times during this, because Sam Underhill was ridiculous uh, in this final. It was him that got an incredible counter-ruck, that got Bath position. A line-up drive was repelled, but they went to Dunn, who nearly scored. Thomas Toy, though, did what he's done all season, picked the ball up and just drove over the line. He just seems to make it so look so easy. I mean, I know he's massive and he had a bloke with him, but he just does it so, so often. He's well into double figures now for tries, which is incredible. He's had a brilliant season and he also had a really brilliant game. Talking of which, shortly after that, he himself won a turnover penalty and... Mitchell was just trying to do too much at this time, I think. He was carrying a huge amount. You know, he's brilliant when he runs, but he needs to link. He needs to get other players into the game. And I just felt he was getting caught a huge amount of times. And he was just, just seemed to put too much pressure on himself, I thought. Also, at this time, Sam Underhill, uh, there was a close-up after he made a tackle and his right ear was essentially just melting. It was falling off, hanging on by a thread. Uh, but that was half-time. 15-10, and it very much felt like it was game on. It was, you know, Saints had done well to take advantage of the, the one man sending off, but Bath had battled back. And at 15-10, you know, that is nervy territory. And Courtney Laws talked about it afterwards. He said, you know, if, you, if you're if you the on the beneficiary of uh, the sending off, then sometimes it just, all the pressure comes on you and you feel like you're expected to win. And that can do funny things to players, especially in a game like a premiership final. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to announce that Smooth Sack Summer is officially upon us. When you're playing in the summer sun, make sure you're groomed from pubes to bum. Thanks to our friend at Manscaped, you can make this season your smoothest yet. The Performance Package 5.0 Ultra is the ultimate bundle to keep your boys downstairs cool while looking hot. Join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our exclusive offer, Get 20% off and free shipping when you go to manscaped.com and use the code TARP20. That's T-A-R-P-20. Summertime and the trimming is easy. Have you really done any male grooming if you haven't nicked a nutsack? I know I have and I have to say I've never felt more confident thrashing through the bushes than with the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra. Every man knows how scary it can get when going for a close shave below the belt. That's why I trust Manscaped for all my sensitive areas. The Manscaped Performance Package 5.0 Ultra has everything you need to prepare that summer bod. 
the fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads a standard one for taking a little off the top and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires we also have dual led spotlights to provide contrast on multiple skin tones three length setting combs and oh did i mention this trimmer is waterproof too beach lake or shower this razor will devour even the strongest pubes now that you have the perfect haircut use manscapes liquid formulations to keep that freshness even at the hottest summer barbecues the crop soother after shave lotion and crop preserver anti-chafe ball deodorant once they touch your sack you'll never go back Get 20% off and free shipping with the code TARP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code TARP20, T-A-R-P, the Amateur Rugby Podcast, 20 at manscaped.com. It's smooth sack summer, boys. Get on board or got left behind. Okay, back to the show. Start the second half and Sam Underhill came back on with another huge strapping around his ear. Get that stuck back to the side of his head. And uh, Finn Russell dummied through past his opposite number, which led to a penalty. And now, 42 minutes gone, 15-13, and you can feel the tension everywhere. It was absolutely brilliant. But come the moment, come the man, and Courtney Laws wins a turnover penalty, which led to another underhill tackle. I'm going to be mentioning him so many times because he had so many huge impacts in this game. And probably there was none bigger than this one, as he whacked Berger Onderdell, which sadly for him caused him to leave the field. Now, just looking at the technique of this, Underhill does something which uh, is not illegal, but if he'd done it slightly earlier, then it would be. And, and there's a reason for it. It's because he drops his left knee. It's a left shoulder tackle when he drops his left knee to the ground right at the point of impact. And that just puts so much more power through your shoulder. It's almost like you're putting the anchors down and you can you can hit that much harder. This was a hell of a tackle and borderline legality. I'd say it is legal, but that is how you get some real big shots in there. Finn Russell was also in that tackle. Got a huge amount of applauders from his teammates, which was embarrassing because he, you know, he was brave, but it was the underhill tackle that did the job. That caused Saints some problems though, because Odendahl goes off. It means Freeman comes in and... Freeman's a great player. I think he's a good centre, but they look much better when he's on the wing. His chasing of kicks, his aerial work, it's just much more effective there. So this was a problem because Odendahl is a big player for them as well. They got another penalty shortly after that and they kicked the previous one to the corner, which was about 10 metres from touch. This next penalty was just on the 15. And I wonder whether they had like a, a policy of if it's inside the 15s, we'll go for it at certain scores and this, that and the other. Or they just went, right, OK, we probably need to consolidate this now. We've lost a player. Let's get another three points on the board, which they did for 18-13. Shortly afterwards, Fraser Dingwall hold, held up Matt Gallagher. You know, probably the least likely player you'd think to get in there and do a big, strong hold-up tackle, Dingwall. But Dingwall was excellent all day for Saints as well. He just got such intelligence about his running lines. He just feels the game in front of his face so well. And the timing of his passes is excellent as well. So I thought Fraser Dingwall had a, had a very good game. Back to Ben Spencer and his attacking kicking because this is the third one and they were all on the money. This one led to George Hendy fresh on the wing. A tough situation. He's backing away, backing away. He's got two hands up to the ball, but he can't gather it. It drops into the in-goal area. Will Muir scores. They go to the TMO just to check and brilliant work by the TMO here. They got the angles. They saw it quickly. They made a nice quick decision. Get on with the game. 18 all, but crucially, the conversion missed. Wide out, but still very kickable for Russell, who apart from that first one was striking the ball well all day. A lot of subs at this point in the game, literally rotating door on the sideline. Uh, and at this point, Will Stewart came on for the <laughs> Bath Lucid Schumann who'd come on in the first half, which meant that Thomas de Toy switched over to Lucid, so playing both sides of the scrum in a final and played the full 80 minutes. It was an outstanding stint by the big man. Shortly afterwards, a lovely bit of game management by Finn Smith. Northampton had gone one way, came back the other. He had options either side and he just looked up, saw Bath were really well organised, knocked it into the corner, which led to a line out to Bath. And once again, back to Sam Underhill, because he carried the ball up and smashed through Curtis Langdon, absolutely nailed him. Langdon, you know, bounced over backwards, got up, clinging his shoulder. Perfectly, all of it perfectly legal, of course. And you look at Langdon, he's shaking his arm out and you're thinking, cool, that's a, that's a stinger. That'll, that'll ease off in a couple of moments. But back to Underhill, like, you know him for his 
tackling first off, his breakdown work second. He's not known hugely for his carrying, but he carried brilliant this, in this game as well. And that one was a real moment where you just go, oh, what momentum. And that was backed up because Furbank dropped an easy pass back inside and Finn Russell banged an absolutely brilliant 50-22. And suddenly the momentum is all, all Bath. i got to say Finn Russell, I thought played really well. A little bit understated. You know, he didn't pull out all the tricks, but it wasn't that kind of game. I thought he managed what Bath did really well. Now, Langdon's stinger. We thought it was a stinger, but Freeman won a turnover. The ball got passed to him at first receiver and he couldn't lift his hand up to catch the ball. That's when you go, okay, this is probably not going to shake off. And he came off shortly afterwards and Curtis Langdon was still shaking his arm off when he was collecting his medal at the end of the game. Back to Mitchell. And again, another example, I think, of where he was just trying to... I just felt he tried to do too much or Bath managed him really well. It was probably a combination of both because in Northampton Territory, they had a really strong driving mall going forward. And it looked like, at the very worst, they were going to get Bath to commit a penalty and then be able to kick down the line. Mitchell thinks he sees a gap on the blind side, takes it out, drives forward. Bath st just step off him, particularly Ben Spencer, I think, gave him space. And that led to another Thomas Detoy turnover. And again, this is pressure, pressure showing. And Saints just could not get out of their half at this point. And Bath were not exactly flowing. They weren't exactly playing beautiful rugby, but they had all the territory. And when you're deep in your half, in this kind of game, when it's tight, that just that adds the pressure, goes on, on and on. Shortly afterwards, Sam Underhill went off to have his ears strapped back on again. And I was listening to ITV and David Flatman was very funny. And uh, he suggested maybe he just takes it off and leaves it off until he retires and then stick it back on after then, which was good. Bath nicked a penalty shortly after that. And now 1821, all that territory, all that pressure and Bath score next. And it's now a three point game. The tension again was going through the roof at this stage. Back to another person that we've mentioned several times already. Tommy Freeman won the kickback from the kickoff against the lifting pod. He was absolutely brilliant in the air all day long. And it just shows what an all-round winger he is. He can roam the field when the attack's going well and insert himself into the most critical places to make the breaks. He can finish tries in the corner. But on days like this, when the game's like this, when there isn't that much free flow in rugby, to be able to win kicks back regularly is such a weapon for your team. That led to a penalty in the 68th minute on the 22, a shoo-in of a kick to make the game 21 all. Alex Mitchell taps and goes. I mean, I think everybody went, I certainly went, oh, what are you doing? Like, surely just take the points. And you never know what the counterfactual is. Mitchell might have uh, nicked through or they might have missed the penalty or whatever. But Saints ended up dropping the ball. Again, more, more tension. The whole stadium lifts up. All the bar supporters are starting to believe. They then get the penalty at the next scrum. And it's back, it's back, all the pressure's back on Northampton when it could have been 21 all and you just go into the final 10 minutes knowing that it's absolutely game on. More benefit for Bath, more trouble for Northampton as Finn Smith goes off with what apparently turned out to just be cramp, uh, but he couldn't shake it off, which meant Furbank goes to 10, not a problem in itself. But then James comes onto the wing, scrum half replacement, and Hendy goes to fullback. So again, these people can do this. Tom James is a very quick scrum half, and I'm sure he's trained on the wing a lot, but it's not ideal. It's not what you'd want for sure. You definitely would want Finn Smith in there, orchestrating things as you go into the final plays. However, Saints got a midfield line out they played both ways. They kept playing. They kept offloading. They kept playing out the back, sticking to their DNA. And they got Ollie Lawrence to turn in on the outside. I was watching with my family, a lot of whom haven't watched a lot of Premiership rugby this season. And as Hendy caught the ball, I just said, he's quick. And he proved that to be absolutely correct as he got on the outside of Lawrence, who just couldn't turn and recover in time, stepped inside Will Muir, beat another player as well, and offloaded to Alex Mitchell, who tried to do so much all day, found himself on the perfect support line, stepped inside, Joe Thock and a singer to score near the post. And I was delighted for him because you cannot fault the effort. You cannot fault the industry. It just didn't go for him in a lot of ways on the day. But I was delighted for him to score what turned out to be the winning try and 
it was right next to the post, which was important because you've got a secondary goal kicker on the pitch now in George Furbank. And he casually waited for the shot clock to run down to almost zero before whacking it over for 25-21. However, the drama was far from over. Bath won the kickoff, which led to an incredibly nervy last five minutes. The scrum battle came back in a vengeance now, with Manny Yogan against Will Stewart being the key battleground. Saints get a penalty clear their lines and it just felt like that was a huge moment and like is this it is this they're just going to see the game out now but Bath played some really good stuff they got the ball back from that line out they went wide wide offloaded made a ton of ground but Cam Redpath tried to offload I think to Ollie Lawrence out the back of the hand it went straight to touch and again it was like a minute to go this must be it like this must be over now but Northampton messed up their line out there was a poor lift maybe one of the guys missed the call it was unclear and that led to another scrum, this massive scrum battle that was going on. And it was very even. I don't mind that these last two penalties, they went one each way and they could have easily potentially gone the other way. It was very, very close. But Yogan was going for it. He was being aggressive and he was really putting Stewart under pressure. But Bath got this scrum penalty. One last chance, kicked into the corner. The mall was defended brilliantly. But it looked like Northampton had a lot of players around that mall as well. So it felt like there must be chances out wide. However, Bath had already taken off Thocken a singer for Reed earlier. I think they decided that their best chance of getting a win was to get a line out, to get a line out maul and drive, and to have that extra big player or forward, someone who's used to mauling on the pitch. They couldn't get it done. They couldn't get the maul done. So they moved it wide, but the passing was just off a little bit. Hendy got in there, made the tackle, chainsaw rip, the ball came out, scrambled over. Tom James kicks the ball off and it is all over. So, so tense, so, so close. And you could just see players sort of collapse on the pitch all over. It was a brilliant game. On the losing side, I've spoken about them all through this video. Thomas de Toy, Ben Spencer, and especially Sam Underhill were absolutely outstanding. And as we considered uh, in our armchairs who the man of the match might be, we went through the Northampton team. We'd been discussing about the, you know, the man of the match always comes to the winning tide. And we couldn't think of anybody on the Northampton team, really, that stood out and deserved the man of the match. There were some decent performances, but nobody really stood out as being being the outstanding player on the day. I would say all of those Bath players were above any of the Northampton players. And that came true when George Hendy got caught on camera as he was getting told he was the man of the match. And uh, he, um, I'm not going to say on this video, but he uh, said an expletive and then just went, really? Courtney Laws afterwards, <laughs> afterwards, you know, really chill outwardly. But he said inside, he was absolutely furious about how they played. And that just goes to show, like, that's how you get to that level. That's how you get to be a player like Courtney Laws is. Like, just still, it's his last game for the club. They're the champions. But he's still concerned about performance. He's still concerned about being better and how, the, how they didn't get their game on the pitch. But as he said, they found a way to win. And that is what finals really are all about. I'm delighted for Saints. They played the best rugby all season. They showed grit and determination through the knockout phases because they didn't play their best rugby there, that's for sure. But that's what champions are made of. Alex Waller, Lewis Ludlam, but especially Courtney Laws. A fitting finale for them in their Saints career and the end to a brilliant premiership season. I'm exhausted. It was amazing. I loved it. But what do you think? Any key moments I've missed out? Uh, let's have them in the comments down below. Any players, particularly on Northampton, tell me who you think Northampton's best player was. I'd love to hear that uh, down there and I'll join you for a friendly conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there. If you don't mind, it helps other people find it and you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next and do not forget to get out and play.